Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquay of Living Streams International. We meet behind the trade fair, behind Zenith College, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Uh, this morning, I'd like to just capture my thoughts in this word, mark the dream. That is, mark the dream. Um, my, my thoughts are being taken from Genesis chapter 37, 1 to 11. You, you remember Joseph uh, in the coat of many colors? Yeah, you know, show, show, boy. Yeah. Now, and, um, and then you remember the dreams that he had. Now, I've, I'm very intrigued by the, the, the two different dreams that he had. And as a, as a young boy, number one, the first dream that he had, he said, we were in the fields and we were all harvesting. And as we were harvesting, my sheep stood up and then uh, my brothers, the uh, sheep of my brothers, or, or my brethren bowed and bowed and did reverence or obeisance to my 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 chief, and and that that was something that created a lot of like I mean anger in the in, in the in the minds and in the mouth of his brothers like foolish boy what what do you mean I mean you 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 we are going to be bowed to you are you crazy and then the second dream too if you remember the second dream was. He said, uh, I saw the sun, moon, and stars, you know, bowing to me. And uh, that one, it was like, and the Bible says, and they hated him yet the more. It's like, this guy, who, does, who the hell does he think he is? I mean, who does he think he is? Now, the brothers were, were uh, angry. And look, if you look on the surface, they, they rightly had to be angry. Because what do you mean? I mean, you are our kid brother. And then all of a sudden, uh, we, we, our sheaves are bowing to you, and then the sun, moon, and stars. What kind of dreamer are you? In fact, that's why they, they gave him the tag. Here comes the dreamer. But you know, his father also rebuked him. But his father just didn't rebuke him. The, the Bible says that his father, Jacob or Israel, I mean, marked the dream and said, hmm, something. Now, I want us to mark the dream also, and then I'll explain. Now, here's the principle. The wrong interpretation of the dream was what was troubling all of them. All of them missed the, the, the import of that dream. Or they, they, they missed exactly what God wanted to say. And here we go. Number one, Joseph said, we were in the fields and my sheep stood up and then my brother's sheep bowed to me. It's very simple. Now, anytime the Bible talks about sheep, it talks about harvest. He who goes sowing in tears shall likewise come back rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. The sheep represents harvest. And so the sheaves are always what is used as a sign for harvest. So here was God saying, everybody was going to have their harvest. But then the harvest of Joseph was going to stand up. The harvest of Joseph was going to stand up. So I'm marking the dream. Mark number one. The first dream was a dream of purpose. And I'll explain. The first dream was a dream of purpose. That, that means God was saying that everybody was going to have harvest. But the harvest of Joseph was going to stand up. And here's the thing. In the kingdom, we have things a little bit upside down in the kingdom. If you remember, the Bible said, I mean, uh, in, in the kingdom, the greatest is the least. The greatest is the servant. So in actual fact, what God was saying, everybody was going to have their harvest for sure. But Joseph was going to have a harvest that is going to stand up. And the harvest was going to serve the, his brothers. That was the interpretation of the dream. And because they did not understand, they were, they were angry with him. So first dream, the first dream was a dream of purpose. When God said, this is what I want you to do. I am going to lift you up. I'm going to make you stand tall. I'm going to make you do But you are going to become a servant to your brethren. Whereas they didn't understand the dream. And, and Jacob too didn't understand the dream. And as a result of that, he rebuked him. But as a result, the brothers persecuted him. They didn't mark the dream properly. Because if you had marked it with the standards of God, you realize that, listen, Joseph was rather going to be servant, chief servant. Alas, boy boy. 
<laughs> that was what was going to happen. But because they didn't understand. So the first dream was a dream of purpose. And God said, this is what I'm going to do. You are going to stand up and save your brethren. Then the next dream was, I saw the sun, moon, and stars. And that infuriated them the more. And the Bible said they hated him the more. They don't need to. Because the first one was a dream of purpose. But the second dream was a dream of placement. That is, God said to them, listen, this thing that's going to happen is going to be, it's going to be geographically located. And so the first dream was a dream of purpose, but the second dream was a dream of placement, and God was talking about Egypt. Now, the highest god in Egypt at the time was the sun god, and the Egyptians built their pyramids according to the constellations of the stars. And if you remember, the Egyptians were stargazers. So in actual fact, God was saying, this thing is not going to happen in Israel, but this thing was going to happen in Egypt. So God was saying, I am taking you to Egypt. And that was why, finally, when jo uh, Joseph came to himself, when his brothers wanted to apologize, he said, no, 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 no. He said, it was God who brought me here. Because God has purpose, and he has a placement for your purpose, for it to become alive, for it to work, for it to become a reality. So God has a plan, but the plan also has a placement. So God has a plan to feed Elijah, but he tells him, go to Zarephath. I have commanded the widow woman there to sustain you. God has a, he wants to make Elijah drink. Then he says, go to the brook Cherith. God has a, a, a plan or a purpose for the, uh, 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 for the people of Israel. But he says, I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. So there's always a geography to the purposes of God. There's always a geography the purposes of God. And because people don't understand it, and because they didn't understand it, they were persecuting it. But guess what? What they were doing, rather, was becoming, the, God used their hatred as fuel to push Jacob, to push Joseph to Egypt. So sometimes, we, we, we have elders who do not even understand the dream, and not just understand the dream, but there are people who sometimes they'll persecute you because they don't know. They have not marked the dream properly. Whereas they took cognizance of the dream, or they took, they recognized the dream, they persecuted him. But guess what? Jacob, his father, didn't like the dream too much because he also rebuked him, but he marked the dream. And the dream was very simple. Purpose and placement. So, you know, what God was saying, Joseph, there's something I want to do with your life. You're going to stand, but you're going to save your brethren. But you know what? It's going to take place in another country, Egypt. So sometimes you need to mark the dream. And if you can't, look for people who would understand. Your dream is your purpose, your goal, what you want to do, what God wants to do with your life. If you can't, maybe you need people who would help. But guess what? No matter what the enemy does, the foundation of the law stands sure. And what he has said, he will surely accomplish. Because when he speaks, his word accomplishes the purpose for which it was sent. So it happened to jo Joseph. See you later as you mark the dream.